What's up you guys, Gong Rong Zong here, back with another Division 2 guide just for you. Today, I want to present to you the Tok 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 Sharpshooter build, which I am really enjoying right now. Doesn't it sound just like that? Uh, Tok 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 Tok. Well, I guess with the silencer it's actually like... Psh, psh, psh. But whatever. This build is fully capable of soloing level 4 control points in World Tier 5, with no deaths I might add. And these level 4 control points give hell of a lot of loot if you've not tried them yet. Okay, now on to the gear. But even before that, I just wanted to show you guys my gear score. 471. That's right, 471. At gear score 471, I was able to solo level 4 control points. In fact, a good deal of my pieces are still the 450s that I found at World Tier 4. Even my freaking knee pads are at 426. I am just showcasing this to highlight an important point to you as you try to gear up. Gear score currently means very little at the end game. Choose the pieces that have rolled with high stats that will fit into your build, not the ones with the highest gear score. So let's talk about the marksman rifle first and why I've currently chosen to switch from the bolt action marksman rifles to the tok 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 ones for solo play. The main reason is that with the nerf to the Model 700, bolt action marksman rifles unfortunately no longer pack as much of a punch as they do, which was their entire purpose. It's very easy to miss with them as you have to hit the head for their shots to count, and their reload speed is also much much longer, causing any of your missed shots to be extremely punishing. This was offset by its insanely high damage at the launch of the game, allowing you to almost one-shot yellows when you hit the head. But without this reward for the amount of risk it brings, I just felt like it's no longer worth it to use them. This does not mean that they are not worth using in group play though, where you have much more space to sit at the back and take calculated shots. But for solo play, where enemies are coming at all angles and targeting you and you only, semi-automatic tok 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 marksman rifles just seem to pull way ahead for their flexibility in dealing with all types of encounters. As you can see here in this specific instance, when I was being rushed by an enemy at close range, I was able to take him down with the semi-auto marksman rifle quickly and easily. It does a serious amount of damage if you're able to constantly stay on target, anywhere from 2.5 million DPS with my current setup. A bolt action marksman rifle, especially with the recent nerfs to the Model 700, would not have been able to deal with this in bolt tier 5, as even if you landed a headshot, it would not have one shot the mob, causing you to still have to switch out to your rifle to take him down. So the best semi-auto marksman rifle that I've managed to find so far is the SVD. It gives the highest amount of damage per bullet and has a pretty small kickback when you pump all your mods into stability, which I'll go over in a bit. Okay, so what about the mods? In order to know which mods are optimal, we first have to be aware that stability, that's right, stability, is the most important stat for a tok 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 marksman rifle. This is the complete opposite of bolt action marksman rifles, where stability is completely unimportant. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here we are at the training room right now, and I have my SVD currently equipped, and it's nearly a full bar of stability. I have all the necessary stability mods equipped out on the SVD to try and max out as much stability as I can. And I want to showcase to you guys why stability is actually so important. Now take a look at this number 50 here. I'm going to aim a shot right in the middle of this zero right here. And I want you to see how far the recoil goes. Okay, let's take a shot. Not that much. It went up by a little bit. I'm going to take another few shots just to showcase to you guys. It, the variance is just very little, right? How much recoil there is in the gun. I'm not moving my mouse at all when I take a shot. That it Maybe it moves up on the screen maybe a millimeter or maybe a few millimeters at most, at most, right? And this is with a full bar of stability. So let me show you guys another few more shots. If I'm aiming straight at the center of the zero over here, I take a shot, it barely even moves up, right? It barely even moves up. And you can tell how important this is if you're trying to aim for an enemy head that's about 50 meters away. Now I want to show you the opposite. I have all the stability mods equipped on this SVD rifle right now. I am going to strip everything away uh, I gotta add back the digital scope though. Okay, so I've stripped away all my stability mods 
and the SVD has dropped from about this amount of stability all the way to around here. Even then, it doesn't look like much, but I want to show you how significant a drop it is. So I'm going to aim for the middle of the zero again. I'm going to take a shot. Look at how far the scope went up. Look at how big the recoil was. It was a giant kickback. I'm going to aim another shot here. It jumped all the way up, even above the 50 marker. Do it again. Look at that. Do it one more time to show you guys. All the way up. So this is just to showcase to you how important all of these stability mods are. You definitely want to put as much stability as possible into these uh, top, top, top kind of uh, marksman rifles. So let me just do one last one to compare again. Now with all the stability mods, just now when I hit here without any stability, my crosshair moved all the way up beyond even the marker. I'm going to take a shot again. Look at that, it barely even moved a little bit. And so this is why stability is so important. It's so important for you to max out stability on this type of marksman rifle. So besides the digital scope, you want to pump every single mod you have into stability, of which there is one for each slot. Taking a hit to optimal range for your muzzle isn't that significant when you choose the Omega 7.62 rifle suppressor, as during solo play, the majority of your encounters will be in the moderate range. For the grip, it'll be the angle grip, and for the magazine, the sturdy marksman mag. Lastly, for the talents, we always want to go with our default choice of ranger. We'll be using our marksman rifle primarily for long range combat, and so it benefits the most from ranger. For our second talent, you have a few good choices. Stability will likely be the ideal choice, as we need as much stability as we can get for our Tok 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 Marksman Rifle. Regardless, rate of fire can also be nice, as it comes in pretty handy for close to moderate range encounters when you just need to spam at a target. Other than these two, the rest would probably be less than ideal. For the third talent, just pick whichever one suits your fancy, depending on your own playstyle. Okay, so on to your second weapon, the rifle. So like the nerfs to the Model 700, the nerfs to the MK17 hit it pretty hard too. It's no longer the best rifle by far. But the nerfs did result in a little bit of variety and choice that we as players can now make, which is a good thing. Let's look at the actual math first, before looking at the training room. We're going to be comparing three of the best rifles I've found so far. Of course, these damage numbers are what my current guns rolled with, but it's still able to give you a rough idea of where they stand. Let's look at the MK17 first. 52.4k damage times 275 RPM equates to about 14.4. Now what about a SIG? We have 43.5k times 320 RPM, about 13.9, a little bit less. And then what about the MDR? Here we have 40.5 times 360, resulting in 14.6, the highest of them all. Now let's take a look at the training room, and no surprise there, the numbers are reflected accurately as well here. In terms of sustained DPS, in which I utilize at least half the clip spamming into the targets non-stop, the MK17 was able to achieve a consistent 1.3 to 1.0 million DPS. The SIG was a little less, 1.1 to 1.2 million. And the winner of them all would be the MDR, topping off for sustained DPS at 1.4 million at least, with huge bursts that could spike up to 2 million when the enemy was at close range. However, there are a few small but important points to take note of. The MDR, for one, has a huge damage drop-off and isn't the ideal choice for long-range encounters. However, in this specific sharpshooter build, we're primarily looking at solo options, and so when paired with the SVD marksman rifle, long-range shots have already been more than taken care of. Secondly, the MDR also relies on its higher rate of fire to do more damage, resulting in you running out of rifle bullets much faster. This often isn't a problem, but can every now and then result in you running low on bullets when taking on extended firefights, so it is something to be aware of. In a nutshell, the MDR seems to do better at closer to moderate range encounters, with the MK17 for longer range, or perhaps group play depending on your party composition. I myself kept switching back and forth between the two weapons, trying to figure out if there was truly like a best between them. I don't particularly think so, which is great for variety. I would guess that in the end, it all boils down to personal preference and the particular mission, stronghold, or whatever event it is that you're doing. 
but for solo play, if I had to make a hard choice, I would still suggest the MDR. Now, what about the rifle mods? Well, the mods you want for your rifle follow a similar approach to your SVD Marksman rifle, as they're both semi-automatic rifles. Stability all the way, and then add on to other things after that. These might change based on whether you have the 15% stability talent on your rifle or not. Also, in general, I didn't find accuracy to be that important. Around a halfway point did it just fine for me. For the magazine mod, go for the weighted 7.62 mag, which for the MDR would pump your stability almost till full, and for the MK17, to full. 10 more rounds really didn't make much of a difference to me, and I found myself often reloading way before that in any case. The days of the 60 bullet mag are unfortunately long gone. As we won't be needing any additional stability after this magazine, I went for the muzzle break on the barrel, as elite damage is still our priority. Same deal for the sight, the biggest amount of elite damage you can get, the EXP S3 hollow sight that adds a flat 8%. Lastly, for the grip, go with the laser pointer. You don't need more reload speed, as these rifles already reload pretty dang fast on their own. Rifles still benefit quite a bit from crit hit chance, as they inherently give you 15% critical hit damage, and so this is the best grip mod to me. Alright, so on to the rifle talents. The first talent you want is also again going to be Ranger. Since the previous glass cannon build that I made, I've made the change over from Brett Basket to Ranger. This was primarily due to the reason that Brett Basket resets every time you reload, making it pretty unviable to me as I was reloading pretty often. Not only that, but it has been proven mathematically that the Ranger talent just adds more damage overall. So there's little debate here between the two. Go with the Ranger talent. For the second talent, similar to the Marksman rifle, you want to go with either Rate of Fire or Stability. Either of these two talents will be excellent. Reload speed will be a tad unnecessary as rifles already reload pretty darn quick as it is. And for the third talent, just choose whichever suits your fancy or your playstyle. Okay, so the next two sections on gear and skills are somewhat similar to what I've mentioned in World Tier 4, but with some important changes. Currently, the three new gear sets don't benefit a sharpshooter gun build at all, so they're not worth looking into. For my own setup, and as I mentioned before, I am completely ignoring gear score in favour of better attributes and better talents. For your attributes, you want to be aiming for them in this priority. Weapon damage, marksman rifle damage, or rifle damage as the first, followed by damage to elites, followed by critical hit chance or critical hit damage, and then lastly headshot damage. Now this is an important change, because previously I had prioritized headshot damage above critical hit chance and critical hit damage. However, that was because the one-shot build placed a lot of emphasis on landing headshots. Now, with your top 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 playstyle, you will be landing a lot more body shots, which is perfectly fine, but it also draws emphasis away from headshot damage. With a faster RPM marksman rifle like the SVD, you will also be benefiting a lot more from critical hits, as the damage will be a lot more sustained and won't be as bursty as a bolt-action marksman rifle. Lastly, it's still a toss-up between weapon damage and damage to elites. However, the gearing system of the Division 2 has fortunately made these choices a little bit simpler. On your mask, you want to aim for the highest ever roll of damage to elites, which I've seen able to roll up to 40% or more. Again, I'll just like to emphasize here that these attribute choices were made for a balance of marksman rifle and rifle usage in mind you will be able to achieve more success with your rifle, for example, by pumping more stats into crit than marksman rifle damage, but that would hamper your longer range capabilities. For solo, I feel like a blend of both weapons served me best. For your talents, similar to the previous glass cannon build, I found that I was able to benefit immensely from stacking all hard-hitting talents on your gear. As you can see in the footage, yellows were spawning literally everywhere, left, right, center, and so I truly feel that 15% more damage to elites outweighs a talent like Devastating, a mere 5% to weapon damage, and Surgical, an 8% crit, whose effect has been diminished due to the recent nerfs to the weapon mods that help to add critical hit chance and critical hit damage. 
For the gear sets, you want to aim for Araldi and Overlords, with any combination of two of one set and three of the other, as they don't have a mask slot. With this build, I would lean slightly more towards 3-piece Araldi, due to the heavy usage of the SVD Marksman Rifle, but I was still able to do just fine with 3 pieces of Overlord. Alright, now on to the skills. The skills that can help you as a sharpshooter are similar to the ones I've mentioned in World Tier 4. As a sharpshooter, you're going to need a reliable source of healing as you stay behind cover, as you'll be taking on periodic bursts of enemy gunfire and lots of their grenades. The healing cam launcher does an excellent job at doing this, as its static ground AoE synergizes very well with the constant stay behind one piece of cover sharpshooter playstyle. It's just invaluable and you never want to leave home without it, even in group play. For the other skill, it's a toss-up between whether you want the standard Hive Revive, which is always great for solo play, or the Tactician Drone. If you feel like you can afford to be a little more offensive in nature, take the Tactician Drone to easily identify where all your targets are. But if you're soloing level 4 control points like me, in which you can no longer fast travel back to a neutral control point if you die while defending it, losing all your progress in the process, the Reviver Hive is probably the best choice in almost all scenarios. So if you found this guide useful, be sure to check out my other Division 2 videos. You may just find something there that could help you in tweaking your build. As always, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in DC.